television. This will be our final television broadcast. Uh, we came up several hundred dollars short again this month, and we just cannot keep making that up a handful of us. So uh, we'll uh, we'll pray about that and move on. And uh, we thank God for the five months that we were able to minister. Had some calls again this week, and I appreciate that. And who knows, maybe in the future we can do that again. But um, some, sometimes um, ministries have, I call it a shelf life. That may not be a good word, but maybe that's what that was. We'll turn your Bibles, Philippians chapter 3, beginning with verse number 4, Brother Allen. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrew of the Hebrews as touching the law of Pharisee concerning zeal persecuting the church touching the righteousness which is in the law blameless but what things were gained to me those I counted loss before you for go, Christ before you go any further that was his resume of religion now listen go ahead but what things were gained to me those I counted loss for Christ, mm. yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but done, that I may win Christ. Glory. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Father, you know our heart. You know the eager enthusiasm that we've had this week to be able to preach and tell these folks what you've told me. I pray it be clear and concise. And most of all, I pray that it would have the Holy Ghost unction. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Put verse 10 back up there. That has been our theme for the third week. We did do an introductory sermon too. He says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. The message today is entitled, that I may know his salvation. Uh, and you may ask, your question initially may be, well, what, what do you mean his salvation? I thought it's my salvation. If it's your salvation, you're in trouble. I want you to know it's salvation comes from God. Can somebody say amen? amen? This, what he just read to you, is the greatest single testimony in the history of mankind that anyone has ever penned ink to paper to write. Paul done what was the most incredible job here, and honestly, I've preached through this, over this, I don't know, 50, 100 times, taught over it, uh, used it in scripture, but I've never spent the time with it that I've spent this week. Now, for everybody that was baptized in persimmon juice, please get over it. It's church time. Amen. Get your mind off of whatever. I'm sorry your eggs was runny or they was too well done or you let your cereal get soggy before you eat it or whatever. Uh, your whole car was draggy starting. Let's just come in here in the next few minutes. Let's just enjoy the Lord and the presence of his church. I met a guy that um, uh, today or yesterday at a gas station that was saving this church years ago, and he shared with me that he was still living with the Lord, but he was burnt out on church. And I said, don't get me started. I'm a church man. If anybody's got a right to be burnt out with church, believe me, it's pastors. Uh, you've seen, heard, looked, and been hurt by it all, but I'll tell you what, Jesus never hurt me. And Jesus died for the church. Jesus saved the church. Jesus has gone away to prepare a place for the church. And he's coming again to get the church so the church may reign with him forever and forever. I want you to know I'm unapologetically a church man. Brother Donnie, I love Jesus, but I don't love the church. You're as confused as a lost ball in high weeds. You, you cannot love one without loving the other. When, when Jesus puts his love in your heart it creates a love for the body of Christ can I get a good amen, amen. but this my folks is one of the greatest <clears throat> testimonies written of any subject but especially salvation 
Verse 4 is not Paul bragging, it's Paul arguing. Paul is saying, I, if you want to brag, guys, I've heard all this bragging I want to get. We've had people come here through the years and they'd say, well, I'm just a good free will Baptist. I'm just a good Baptist. And many times I wished I had, but I didn't. I felt like saying, yes, you are. I'm a good Pentecostal. Yes, you are. I'm a good Methodist. The Bible said there's none good. No, not one. Only the Father is good. And a man calls himself he's good. He's foolish and knows not the truth. Can I get an amen? amen. Well, he goes on to tell all these things. And so I want you to look at seven things today. Seven things. We won't stay on any of them long. <coughs> and I may have to slow down and teach, guys. I've been going on. This has been going on for a month. Matter of fact, after service, I'm just going to get the elders to, and all the church to pray and anoint me. I, I've wrestled this for over a month. I don't have any, I thought I was having a heart attack last night, and it's just some kind of congestion in my chest. And, and right now, in Jesus' name, I come against you, Satan, for trying to bring my flesh to hurt me. Oh, Holy Ghost, moving me. When I'm weak, you're strong. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, Paul, first of all, was not saved by ritual. Paul was not saved by ritual. Look at verse number five. Said circumcised the eighth day. Now you're going to find this kind of humorous, I guess, but the, uh, the Gentiles, you know what they called Jews that was circumcised the eighth day? Eight dayers. Eight dayers. It couldn't be on the seventh day, ninth day, twelfth day. Eight day. And uh, it was one of the things that Paul put in his spiritual prophet column. And today if you're here and you're religious, Today, if you're here and you're self-righteous, today, if you're here and you're confused, today, if you're here and you don't even know if you're saved or not, you've got one of those columns. You've got a column with all the good things you do and a column with all the bad things you do, and you pray to God that them things equal out, and there's more good when you die than there is bad. I've got some bad news for you. You're lost and on your way to a devil's hell. There is, I said, you're lost and on your way to a devil's hell. There is not enough goodness in you to get you to heaven. There is not enough good deeds that you can do. If they were, Jesus would not have died. If you say that you're good enough to go to heaven, you are blaspheming the name of Jesus Christ because the Bible said there is none other name in heaven whereby men must be saved but that of Jesus Christ. That ought to make every Christian shout amen. We've got the problem of understanding the difference between living right, hear me, and the ability to live right. That makes sense? We, we get mixed up on living right and the ability. Danny, without the Holy Ghost, you don't have the ability. You remember that uh, uh, white, that comedian, he said, they told him he had a right to remain silent. He said, I had a right, but at that point he was too drunk to have the ability. Yeah. Well, I had a right to live right my entire life, but I did not have the ability. The problem was, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10 that there is a flesh and there is a spirit and they war against each other and whichever one we feed the most will get the most. It is impossible to feed the spirit of God in a lost and dying state. One of the most profane, vulgar men, one of the most pornographic-minded men, one of the most sick men I ever knew in my life, gave money to Piney Grove Free Will Baptist Church every week, and as far as anybody knows, he died lost. Somebody asked me, was he trying to buy his way into heaven? I said, I don't have any idea, but the truth was, he was. Yeah. Folks, salvation is not about ritual. So Paul, I'm not going to get ahead of myself, but Paul's got this list, and he's telling these people this list so he can establish his point. He says, circumcise the eighth day. That's on the good side. That's what the law said to do. And now he takes it from the prophet's side and puts it on the non-prophet side and said, that won't get me to heaven. Are you with me? And he said, in Acts 15, 1, and certain men came down from Judea, taught the brethren, and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. We've got that going on right here in Tri-Cities region. It's sweeping through here. It's a cult. You can call it anything you want to. 
people says they're saved, they're calling it the Yeshua movement, or they're calling it this or that, and they're going back living under the law, meeting on Saturdays, keeping the harvest moons, the blood moons, all of these things. Uh, the Bible said you're not saved by rudiments and traditions and festivals and all that. You're saved by the blood of Jesus or the blood of Jesus. Oh, somebody ought to give him praise for that. <coughs> And if you don't know why this man, this preacher is a church man and why I'm a Bible man is because people get filled with the Holy Ghost and filled with the Bible, they don't fall for this junk. You hang around these old dead, dried up churches, the power of God ain't been in them in 50 years, and then people wonder why the people fall for every wind and doctrine that comes around. I'm telling you what, Hagen McClellan had the greatest, greatest analogy I've ever heard in my life. I've used it for the last 30 years. Hagen said, Brother Donnie, you ever been anywhere they just word, 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 word? I said, yeah. He said, you ever been anywhere it was Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost? I said, yeah. He said, neither one of them is doing anything but spinning their wheels. The word without the Spirit of God, you'll dry up. The Spirit of God without the Word of God, you'll believe anything, you'll blow up. But the Word of God and the Holy Ghost power of God, you'll grow up. And that's what happens when we see people, I, I, a couple that used to come to church or got carried away into that mess because they, they, uh, they didn't feel comfortable with this or that. I'm going to tell you what happens, folks. When you leave where the Word of God's being preached and taught, you, don't, you better find yourself somewhere else. The Spirit. And we're not the only church. I want you to know, we're not the only church, but bless God, we're one of them. Did y'all get me? I don't say that arrogantly. I say that from the honest part of my heart. We preach and teach the word. Robbie, Robbie what did you teach this morning? <laughs> Was it out of the Bible? Did you use a pure, poor Richard's almanac at all? No, I didn't use the farmer's almanac. I used the inspired word of God. Can somebody say amen? amen. Secondly, we're not saved because we're white. <clears throat> we're not saved because we're black. We're not saved because we're biracial. We're not saved because we're Hispanic or Anglo-Saxon or Russian or Norwegian or Nordic or German or Asian or Filipino or Arab or Persian, any of those things. Because if Paul were, Paul had one of those that he put in the plus column. And he said, look at verse number five again. He said, of the stock of Israel. He was an Israeli. <clears throat> now, to those days, there'd been so many interracial marriages and stuff that some of their, their lineage had been, uh, uh, been, they didn't know who their, their, their ancestors was. I want to do that thing where that you send off that DNA. Has anybody ever done that find out what you are? I'm, I'm, I'm really afraid, though, I'm going to find out there's some wackos in my family somewhere. I know that the gene that I got, Teresa didn't get any of it. Santa got a little of it. Daddy or Mama didn't. But I got the whole enchilada. But you ever seen that where that guy's in his thing and he's doing his labor hosing and all of a sudden he finds out he's Scottish. Next thing you know, he's got one of them kilts or whatever you call it. I ain't wearing no skirt, boys. <laughs> Son, if I'd been in Scotland, I'd been in the fight every day. Can I tell you why? Because when I'd walked off, somebody'd say, Lord, look at his legs. <laughs> somebody'd say, he's got two sticks with caves. My daddy seen the caves on my leg one time. He said, Lord, son, them ain't caves. Them's yearling steers on the back of your leg. <clears throat> Some of you on television, that's all you remember. I'm glad you remembered Brother Donnie. Amen. <clears throat> but he was an Israeli. I don't know what I am. I don't like, the, and I don't mean to offend anybody, but I don't like the terminology European American or Asian American or African American. I think we all ought to be Americans. Amen. Lord God, if I wanted to live in Scotland, I'd be in Scotland. And I, I know I've got Scotch, Irish, American, Indian. We're about as messed up a bunch as I, Mama told me one time. She said, I told a little old something pulpit. We was over in the old church. She said, honey, people think we've got skeletons in our closet. I said, mother, We've got a warehouse full of skeletons in our, our family. Don't y'all act so holy, so do you. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> but he was not a Gentile that had been converted. He was not a half, quarter, eighth, you know, sixteenth. He was a purebred Israeli. That was God's chosen race. But now that Jesus come, he takes that. 
and moves it over the column of no good, no value. Yeah. Now here's Apostle Paul talking, Danny, and he's got two strikes against him, but he's got five more. Let's see how they turn out. Number three, we're not saved by rank or privilege. He was of the tribe of Benjamin. I don't know what you know about Benjamin, but Saul tried to pull that word just a little bitty bunch, but let me tell you about Benjamin. Benjamin was the second son born to Jacob by his beloved wife, Rachel. He had two boys, Joseph, who was more like Christ than anybody in the whole Old Testament. Joseph is the only man we find. It's, I know he wasn't perfect, but he was without reproach. There's like 30-some parallels between Joseph's life. Study it sometimes. He was sold out by his brethren. He was sent into Egypt just like Jesus was. He was sold for 20 pieces of silver. Inflation got Jesus, and they got him for 30 pieces of silver. There's so many parallels. But Benjamin was a child of his old age. And he loved little Ben. Oh, did he not love Ben? He was the only one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Get this. Didn't know this till I was researching for the message. Hearing Ben. Hey, Ben, good to see you. Is your name Benjamin or just Ben? Just Ben. Hello. We'd use you, Benjamin, but I'd say they called him Ben. Nobody went. Nobody calls me Donald but the girl at the bank. She'll say, hey, Donald. I'll say, it's Donnie. She says, good. How are you, Donald? I went into Hamilton's Meet. I've been going to Hamilton's Meet about every week for the last five, six years. And I go in there and Dave goes, hey, Danny, what are you doing? And I said, my name's Donnie. He said, I know, but Danny suits you. <laughs> so he still calls me Danny. But Benjamin was the only one of the 12 chosen tribes of Israel that was born in the Holy Land, that was born in the Promised Land. All the rest of them was born outside of that. But in his old age, they came over to Canaan, remember? And Rachel thought she was past having children, and God sent him little Benjamin. <clears throat> so he was proud of that. When the Holy Land was divided, please hear me. If you don't listen to this message, you'll miss a lot of it. Don't get carried away with my hooping and holler. Was to, when the 12 tribes of Israel divided the land of Canaan, Benjamin got Jerusalem. Benjamin got the holy city. Did you get that? In Paul's day, it was hard to find a full-blooded Benjamite. But Paul says, I'm full-blooded. It come down both lines. Son, you talk about a blue blood. But Paul said, Billy, it wasn't a Pennington or a Humphrey. It wasn't a Smith. It wasn't a Hughes. He took all of that, boys, and put it over to the negative side. Now Paul's got three things that ain't going to get him saved, and his good side is empty. I hope this is mean. Does this mean anything to anybody besides me? All right. Number four, we're not saved by tradition. If we were, every Baptist and free will Baptist in the heaven have a get out of hell free card. Amen. Honest to goodness, Baptists think they're the only ones going to heaven. Burns me up. Them and Church of Christ. I don't know what they're going to do when they get to heaven. There's everything in the world over there. Did you know the people in Ethiopia saved don't even know what a Baptist is? Go up to one of them people in Sudan and say, you ever been baptized in the Holy Ghost heaven and speaking out of the tongue? Oh, I have no idea. I speak the tongue of Swahili. I don't know what you're talking about. The person in Egypt is saved just like the man in Piney Flats, Tennessee. The person in Bronx, New York, from the hood, is saved just like a country boy raised down here on the river bottom of Austin Springs. Hallelujah to God! Woo! Rank and privilege and tradition means nothing. Why? Said he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. The first three things we talked about, uh, being circumcised, being uh, Israeli and being a Benjamite, Paul didn't have anything to do with them. He was inherited. I couldn't. I didn't do anything about being a Humphrey. I didn't do anything about being John, born John C. I didn't have anything to do with me five six. If God asked me, I'd ask him to put at least four or five more inches on my head, like a well, not my head. I'd look odd. My head was out of bed. So. <laughs> my legs. <laughs> when I sit in the chair beside the people, I'm as tall as anybody else. But when I stand up, it's when the when the you can realize something wrong. <laughs> Boy. I watched uh, 
<coughs> Connor run them little old legs across there, and I thought, boy, we got them big long legs from his granddaddy. It's real still they're going. Yeah, look at him go. The last four things that Paul's going to put on his ledger is things he earned. And he said, I'm a Hebrew, look at that, of the Hebrews. What's that mean, Brother Donnie? He spoke the language. He read the language. He wrote the language. Not only were the Jews that day were illiterate, probably 90% of the population couldn't read anyhow. They had to go by what the Sanhedrin said, the priest said. But most of those Jews that could read couldn't read Hebrew. Have you ever seen Hebrew? It looks like Chinese on steroids. Sometime look at Matthew's arm. He's got a tattoo of Hebrews on his arm. He's proud of that thing. It is a nice one. He said, you know what that says? Throw that little, you know, he, he, Matthew's got them little Popeye arms like his daddy. He threw that arm up there and said, you know what that is? I said, no, I know it's Hebrew. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I said, that wasn't written in Hebrew. He said, what? <laughs> I said, that was written in Greek. Well, that's still what he says. <laughs> so if you ever want to know what it would have looked like, if somebody wrote it in Hebrew, Matthew's got it. He knew the, and listen to this, guys, he was studied probably minimum of 10 years. I'm talking about after he got out of the local schools. From the time he was 20 till he was 30, just like Jesus didn't start preaching till he was 30, he studied under Gamaliel, the big daddy, the puff daddy, the head dog of all that. There wasn't but 6,000 Hebrews in the world, and Paul was in the top echelon of the top echelon. That, when, when they walked in the room, you remember that Bugs Bunny where he walked in and went, Leopold, Leopold, he'd do that. Ball. How many saw that besides me? I can't believe there ain't more Bugs Bunny things in this church. That, that hurts me. I'm going to have to get me into the church. I'm going to tell you what. I need some more old people. But he'd walk in, they'd go, Leopold, Leopold. This is the way it was. They'd come walking in and say, Lord, Lord, there's Wayman Thomas, Wayman Thomas. Don't let him see us looking at him. He, he's, a, he's a Hebrew. He speaks fluent Hebrew. He can read it. He can teach it. He can understand it. Man, he is a religious guy. Now, am I telling the truth? Is that not how it was, brother? You, you studied, that's the way it was. Amen, Robbie, am I telling the truth? That's the way it was. And Paul said, uh-oh, I'm going to have to take this off the plus column spiritually and put it on the negative. Why did he? It was wonderful to be a Hebrew of Hebrew, but that didn't save you. Poor old John Hagee and some of these people's preaching this dual salvation, dual atonement. The Jews has got one way and the Gentiles. That's, that's crazy, folks. A man will not go to heaven by just being born a Jew. Most of them, to be honest, is on their way to hell. What's going to happen after the rapture? Well, we're not talking about it. We're not in, I'm in a dispensation of the church, so I'm preaching to you today. Can I get a good hearty amen? Well, poor old fellas, oh for four, let's go on. Number five, you're not saved by religion. Looking at verse five again, look at the bottom of verse five. As touching the law of Pharisee, 6,000 Pharisees in the world. And then of that 6,000 Pharisees, <coughs> there was a 12-man court. These were the supreme court, not only of Israel, like our supreme court, but these supreme court justices ruled with the iron hand. They interpreted law, made law. Anything they said went, period, explanation point. And Paul was educated right in the Sanhedrin, right in that mightiest bunch mightiest ones, the holiest of the holy according. Man, I'm so glad you've done that. Keith, them bullets, I was going to ask you to do that. That's great. Hallelujah. Touchdown! Ritual, peace, family rank, tradition, and religion. He's the Pope. That's who they was if he was a Catholic. They're the Pope. They're the high caste rabbi for a Judaizer. They're the Southern Baptist President of the Southern Baptist Convention in Nashville, Tennessee. That's who they were. The biggest of the big. Not only did they have Alamos' law, but Jesus said in Matthew 15, they made their own laws. Do we not do that today? 
I'm serious. Do we not do that? Well, I believe in the what, but, but I'll tell you what we've always done. We've always done this. We've always said, why do you believe that? Mama believed it. I've heard that a hundred times. Brother, here's what the Bible says. I know, but I've always believed. When you start putting more stock in what mama, grandma, papa, whoever said, then you do thus saith the word of the Lord, you're on dangerous ground. And all of that religion, and I was raised in the very pit of religion. Women wore their hair up. They weren't allowed to cut their hair. And God forbid that some Jezebel put color on her hair. How many besides me has any idea what I'm talking about? Raise your hand. Honey, if you drunk a glass of wine or drunk a half a beer, you'd burn hell wide open. If you smoke cigarettes, look like a 409 freight train. And you could talk about anybody you wanted to, judge anybody you wanted to, throw off on anybody, tell them how low down sorry it was, gossip, unbelief. None of that was a sin. But how did you look on the outside? Jesus addressed that. Yes, he, did. he said, you're like a bunch of tombstones in Moses' yeah. limbs. On the outside, you're polished up. Yeah. Weirdest things happened to me since I've been in the funeral home business. I've been in the funeral home business now about five years. I was out there at the mausoleum burying one other day, and I walked by, and Lord God, there was Dave and Pat White's mausoleum. I said, there's some kind of time warp happened. My Uncle Dave and Pat has died. There's flowers there. I said, they've died. Nobody's told me I've lost my mind. And, I, and all of a sudden, I hear in my background, I hear this. Dee, 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 dee. Yeah. Imagine, if you will, a fat man who goes to the cemetery only to find out that he's dead. <clears throat> but they were religious. And Paul was more so. I remember a church, Christy probably knows what I'm talking about, where the song leader grew to mustache and he wasn't allowed to stand up in front of the choir no more. He had to sit on the front seat and lead the choir. I've asked, I've had deacons and stuff to push me back in the 90s. We asked two or three families to either wear dresses or stay at home. Now having said that, some of you women need to look at how you're dressing sometime. I don't want you to come here with blue jeans look like you sprayed them on three sizes too small. Somebody say amen right there. I believe in modesty. But I'm telling you what, I'd much rather see a nice pantsuit than see somebody's rear end showing as they walk down the aisle with micro mini on. Amen? Amen. Amen. And all y'all like me that's big chested, let's don't show everything, you know? (laughs) Nobody got that. I wasn't talking about y'all, I was talking about me. Paul said, religion, I'm going to take it now and I'm going to put it on the negative side. Paul's in trouble. He's got all these good things that all the Jews think is the greatest thing. Everybody thinks Paul's the greatest thing in the world. Now, number six and seven, I'm going to come to a close. Everybody still wakes, say amen. Amen. Brother Donnie, why do you say stuff? To try to get your blessed attention. Number six. Here's the one that's going to kill folks this day and time. It's going to kill my boss man, a lot of people. I want you to listen to what this one says. You're not saved by being sincere. I thought that I could whoop Randy Seth. I was sincerely wrong. I've been hit by men that felt like a mule kicking in. And I understand that Jimmy Stanley, one of his fun things he'd done in high school was trading licks upside the head. And I always wondered what was wrong with Jim. It's pretty easy to understand after you hear that. Juggling that brain around that cranium. I've had some fellers knock a snot out of me. And I've knocked the snot out. But Big Randy told me he was going to whoop me. He was about Big Dennis's size. And I reared back. And I brought a slug from my fist down from my toenails. I wept and I hit him and it sounded like a pistol. Pow! And he stood there. And if I live to be a hundred year old, I'll never forget what he said. He slung his head, slobbers went everywhere, snot went everywhere. He wiped his mouth and he said, I wish you hadn't have done that. And I said, me too. <laughs> so help me, I did. I said, me too. And I was three times faster than him, but you know, when a bee sting in a cobra, it's not that big a deal. <laughs> but I was sincerely wrong. I thought one time that my car was faster than a police radio. I was sincerely 
wrong. You know when you top the hill and the road's blocked and there's, they're not checking IDs. <laughs> they're wanting to take somebody home with them. I thought I could get by without having a motorcycle license and straight pipes on a motorcycle when I was pastor of this church. That thing, you could hear it coming from Bluff City, and I started around. I've been in my office studying God's holy word. <laughs> Come around that corner, and they sat on the bridge, and I thought, oh, 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 oh. And I kicked the clutch in, kicked, turned that thing off, and let her coast across the bridge. <laughs> old fella came up and said, that's a good-looking bike. I said, man, alive, who painted that? I said, oh, Frank Fitzpatrick. He said, man, that's a pretty custom paint. I said, thank you. He said, well, I heard you come around the hill there a while ago. She sounds good. <laughs> I said, yeah. He said, start her up. <laughs> he said, pop, 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 pop. <laughs> he reached up and grabbed the throttle. He said, I like to hear one run, don't you? About then, my heart was down just above my belly button. That's where it was. He said, uh, yeah, he said, I want to hear him run. I said, don't worry about that. He said, let me see your driver's license. He said, ain't you a preacher? I said, yes, sir. He said, ain't you one of our chaplains? I thought, I've got it. <laughs> yep. <sighs> yeah, I'm one of your chaplains.